Are you tired of men you don't want coming your way? Does it feel like a sea of garbage was dropped off on your front lawn and you got to just sift through it to try to find a good one? Has it gotten so frustrating for you because you don't understand why do the wrong men keep approaching you? Well, I'm going to help clear that up right now. So let's get right to it because here's the reality. So many women are always asking me or making the statement, oh, I can't meet the right guys. Why is it always the wrong guys? What is the problem? And I see so many women allowing this to damage their perspective and essentially cause what I call dating fatigue, all right, or relationship fatigue, where you just start to feel like this, I don't got the energy for this anymore. But I think that a lot of that stems from not understanding why this is happening and how to better handle this. So one of the big reasons why the wrong men keep approaching you is because those men have, those men have nothing to lose. So I'm going to break this down in three categories, all right? Category one, we're going to talk about married or taken men. Category two, we're going to talk about unattractive men. <laughs> Category three, we're going to talk about men who only want to have sex, all right? So Category one, married or taken men. Here's the thing. Those men tend to be the boldest, all right? They, they will approach who they want because the reality is that they have something at home. Your rejection, yeah, like they might miss the shot, but they still got something at home to take care of them. They, they still are going to be okay at the end of the day. So with them, it feels like less of a risk. It doesn't feel as scary for some individuals, all right? Not to mention that, listen, this man may also be more hungry at the moment because it's one thing to be a single man with maybe nothing going on right now and, and maybe you're not even mentally into trying to pursue any woman at the moment. But when you're a married man, and this is, this is not all married men situations or all taken men situations. But in some, if you're that guy and you're neglected at home, I'm not saying that to validate this. I'm explaining it, all right? You're being neglected at home. You are essentially a lion with, with the meat right there and you can't eat the meat, <laughs> okay? And you're being starved. Well, once you're let out the cage, you're going to go after whatever meat you can find. It, there's more of a built up hunger, built up frustration. So they're more on the hunt when they actually get the opportunity to. All right. And of course, there's various reasons that's going to depend on the guy and the very specific situations. But again, in, in essence or in general, taking men just have nothing to lose and they know they have someone at home. But let's talk about unattractive men. Why is the unattractive men continuously pursuing you, right? Now listen, I'm not here to, to evaluate what is attractive and not attractive. That's for you to determine, all right? I just know that this is what I hear from women saying, that a lot of unattractive men are coming their way. But once again, I don't think women understand that the unattractive men, some of them, have nothing to lose. Because some of them have developed an immunity to, to rejection, okay? They, these dudes have been through the ringer enough that they don't care at this point. It's whatever. I knew a guy back in the days, this man, it's, it's like he already had accepted in his mind it's a numbers game. He knew that maybe he's not the greatest looking or whatever, but if he talked to enough women, he's going he's gonna, to he's gonna hit the jackpot at some point. And he... He would. He would often, believe it or not. But this man had no, he had no pride, no shame, no fear, <laughs> okay? He just went in. Whereas uh, a better looking guy, their ego is more involved. See, the, the unattractive man has, has possibly learned to move completely past ego. So he does not care. He's numb to this, all right? He's, he may have been in 20 other girls' DMs already getting shut down. It's nothing to him. He, he, he can DM you 20 times and you never respond. He's going to DM you a 20 what time, okay? 21st time. Like, he just does not care. And that's why he does it. But now we have the other guy, all right, which is the guy who only wants you for sex. And... This guy, it's easier for him to pursue 
Same, and, and let me, let me, I feel the need to say this. The reality is that sometimes the guy who only wants to pursue you for sex, you do want him. All right. You may not want what he wants. You may not want him for just that reason. You want him to, to desire more with you, but he can be the guy that you actually want to deal with. This is where it can get really tricky because this is where a lot of women fall into situations that maybe they weren't trying to or they didn't desire to initially be in, but for various reasons, they, they allow themselves or they, you know, yeah, they allow themselves to move further with this man. All right. And then attachments are created. But either way, going back to the point, because he's only pursuing you for sex, his emotions are not involved. And because his emotions are not involved, it is very, it's easier for him to just look for the next woman to conquer, look for the next, you know, the next challenge that he wants to overcome. He can be led by his lust. And I always say it is easier to chase lust than it is to chase love. OK, because, again, when you're in lust, rejection doesn't hit the same. When, when you're in lust, you understand or you start to begin to understand that for some guys, it's a numbers game. If they just if they just hit on enough women, they're going to get what they they're going to get someone at some point. You know, some men have not developed that per perception, but it does exist out there. So regardless, this is what fuels this man to be willing to be to approach you even though he's not the right man for you or doesn't have serious intentions for you, with you. Now, I know what some of you are thinking. Well, okay, well, what about the good guy? Why, why do these guys have no fear and the good guy with good intentions seems to be more hesitant? Well, those guys, good guys, and I would even argue better looking guys, tend to be more cautious, all right? Now, if we, if we focus first on highly desirable men or better looking men or whatever, here's something that I think a lot of people don't realize. There's a lot of men out there who they may be viewed as desirable or good looking, but they're actually very insecure. And again, their ability to handle rejection is not good. So they don't want to put themselves in that situation. They want to go for what they feel is more of a short thing. All right. So once they feel like they're getting enough energy back from this woman, they're willing to go with that. But just to just go after a woman just because she looked good to him or whatever, he's less likely, all right? And again, because also his ego is involved. And he just he, he's not prepared to take that hit to his ego. Now, listen, it, it doesn't mean that there aren't some men who, of course, move past that and can do it. But I, I do think we underestimate how many men are kind of still stuck in that mindset, so to speak. But then when we talk about the guy who just has genuine intentions, well, there's a couple aspects we have to consider. The guy who has genuine intentions, genuinely is looking for a relationship. Consider, number one, that he, he's going to be more cautious for reasons such as he doesn't want to come off in any kind of way disrespectful. So meaning if, if it's an in-person situation, he sees you in the street, he may have some interest. But if you look like you don't want to be bothered, and which is why I, I'm always stressing if you see when you're out and about being mindful of the energy that you're giving off, because that's going to play a huge role in at least the good guy's willingness to approach and say something. So if you look like you don't want to be bothered and many of you, <laughs> some of you can admit this, some of you will be like, I don't, I don't think I look like that. But many of you look like you don't want to be bothered. All right. Many of you have what some of you have referred to as resting be faced. OK, like. Or, or what I like to say, you like you mean mugging, all right? You, you, you just always mean mugging. So you have this look that says, don't bother me. Don't talk to me. And the good guy is not going to want to disrespect what he conveys as you don't want to be bothered. The guy who only wants sex, the married guy, the taken guy, hell, the unattractive guy, they don't care. <laughs> they, they do not care. They don't care how you're coming across. They don't care if you don't want to be bothered. They're going to pursue because they're locked into what they want to do, what they want. The good guy is going to be more naturally considerate. So there's that reason, all right? Also, yes, for many of the good guys, there is that level of... Uh, being afraid to be rejected all right and being especially when it's a woman that you have real interest in again it's one thing 
When you're pursuing, and this kind of goes back to the guy who only wants sex. When you're pursuing a woman who you just want to sleep with, her nose don't sting because you're not into her like that. So it doesn't bother you the same. It's almost a cat and mouse game, and you're going to just, as long as you can eventually get this, you're going to keep at That guy's going to keep at it. But the guy who actually likes you or actually views you as, oh my gosh, this, this could be potential wifey or whatever, and yes, there are men who just looking at you are already processing that in their head, he's going to be more sensitive to a rejection. He's going to be more sensitive to any resistance that you show him. So again, he becomes more cautious in his willingness to approach, all right? And, and, it, and, it, and it depends on how available that you allow yourself to be, which is why I'm always, again, as, as on top of giving off that feminine positive energy, smiling is always helpful, at least when you're in the area of men, you wouldn't mind approaching you. I understand you don't want to smile all the time because maybe... You don't want to give that signal to everyone that you're open for business. I hope that don't sound bad, but <laughs> you know that you're you're willing and able. Uh, you're, you're open to the, you know having a discussion and, and getting to know someone. But at the very least, when you see a man that you actually would be interested in talking to, yes, it would be in your best interest to smile, to make yourself more inviting, maybe to even create conversation. All right. Again, not pursue as in you ask for his number and ask him on a date, but just generating conversation, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, and that kind of helps that guy who has interest but may have been a little hesitant be much more willing to now, okay, push this along and go after you. But you know, here's something that I think is important that we understand with all of this, all right? Because again, we, we talked about the, the bad men, so to speak, why they approach, and the good man, why he'd be hesitant. But I think you have to always remember that the majority of men who approach you will be the wrong men, all right? I like to say, if you meet 100 men tomorrow, 99 of them aren't for you. And the reason why I'm, I'm making this point, I think it's important for you to really grasp this, is because I see so many women get discouraged and I think it's because they're not understanding that this is par for the course. This is normal. I don't know if there's a woman out there, and there's always exceptions to every rule, but I would argue that most women, if not all women, get approached by more of the wrong men. Like, I don't, it's not, it's, it's not possible, you know, for, for someone to always get approached by the right guy because everybody's not the right guy. Now, granted, you may say, well, some women are getting approached by higher quality men but don't be fooled higher quality is sometimes a matter of perception not a matter of reality so yes we you may be seeing this woman get a pro box let's put it in an easier to understand example let's say there's a woman and she's getting approached by nothing but rich men and, and, and men who are you know are well established in all these things and so to another woman, she may say, oh, well, see, she's getting all these quality guys, quote unquote, but some of those men could be trash. Like, <laughs> they might be rich, but that doesn't mean they're not trash. And it doesn't mean they're going to treat her right. It doesn't mean it's a good situation. So again, she's still being approached by the wrong men. They're just dressed better. Isn't that saying, you can put a lip, lip what is it? You put a lip thing on a pig, but still a pig? <laughs> Something like that. All right, like, yo, it's, there's a bunch of pigs with lipstick. So don't, don't get fooled by that. But keep, in, keep things in proper perspective. The majority of men that approach you are going to be wrong. So it's not something to get discouraged by or to, to feel defeated by. Because this is what everyone goes through. Everyone. It's just a matter of you learning. It's not about what you attract. It's about what you entertain. So the big thing that people have to understand is we can't completely control everyone that comes our way, all right? There's going to be some good, there's going to be some bad. Now, yes, if all you're getting is bad, and, and let, me, let me qualify that by saying if all you're getting is bad in the sense of even how they're perceived. So no one seems to be perceived quality. Because again, when we get to the, to the deeper root of these individuals, they may still be bad people for you. 
But if you're not even seeing quality on the surface coming your way, then yeah, we're gonna discuss at the end of this video how we correct that or how we make that better. But ultimately, you can be the most amazing woman. You're gonna have good, you're gonna have bad coming your way. All right? The question is, who are you gonna give your time and energy to? Who are you gonna entertain? And this is going to be what defines how your relationship, how your quality of life will go, the, the impact this will have on future relationships is who you allow yourself to get caught up with, all right? Because when people say, well, you, you are what you attract, that's not necessarily true. Because again, you can be amazing. You're still gonna attract garbage men. I, I'm just gonna say it like that. You're still gonna attract those men because listen, when you are, when your light is shining bright, everyone wants a piece of that action. The good, the bad, you name it. But the problem that a lot of women, a lot of good quality women have found themselves in is entertaining the garbage man, is allowing themselves to be engaging with this man for months, years later. It's, and I say this with no disrespect, not to hurt anyone's feelings, but it's allowing yourself to be impregnated by this man and have a child with this man, all right? And not having to deal with this garbage man for, for the rest of your life. These are the decisions that we have to be mindful of because again, we cannot control who we attract, but we can control who we entertain. And when we start to be better with who we entertain, we can increase our ability to attract better into our life. Because here's the, the nasty trap or trick of all this, whatever you want to call it, is once you start entertaining one garbage man, it starts to have a domino effect. Because when you entertain that first garbage man, right? Now he does something stupid, he hurts you. And unless you are aware enough to fully heal from that hurt, you will now carry that hurt to your next situation. You will now, more than likely because you have not healed, choose another garbage man. You, your, your, your ability to see things clearly and understand what needs to happen or to be emotionally healthy enough to not get attached to another bad situation is severely hindered. You will start to see a cycle form. And so a lot of Women don't realize, and, and yes, this applies to men too, but a lot of women don't realize that it, it's, the, it's the not taking a moment to heal and then really holding yourself accountable in the sense of, okay, I'm not going to entertain what I know is not for me, all right? Now listen, I know as human beings, we all make mistakes. We slip up sometimes. So I don't know if anyone's gonna ever be perfect with this. But that's why at the very least, I mean, listen, I want you to strive to be your best in, in how you date and how you have these relationships. But at the very least, you gotta heal when you do get yourself caught up. You gotta be aware enough that when things get too far, you gotta be able to cut things off. You have to be aware enough to understand what is the point that, that puts you in too deep that you're now gonna have a hard time pulling it out, okay? Because if you know, for example, having sex with a man is gonna make you too attached, don't have sex. You know what I'm saying? Do everything in your power to avoid that, to give yourself enough time to evaluate what's going on. Yes, I know some of you are saying, well, you shouldn't be having sex at all anyway. I listen, we, we understand, but we also understand as human beings, sometimes this stuff happens. Regardless, if you know that's your breaking point, don't do it. Another example, if you know that giving gifts or money makes you too attached to somebody, don't give them no gifts or no money. I, I, I'm really not a fan of you giving money at all, but <laughs> if you want to do that or you got it like that, that's your choice. However, if you know that's what gets you to be a little stuck, then you got to cut that off as soon as, or you got to not do that. So again, we, we got to understand that it's who we're entertaining that's causing a bigger problem than who we're attracting. But yes, there are some things to consider in regards to who we are attracting or when we are only attracting nothing but low quality or unhealthy people. If you want to break the cycle or 
you want to see better results in who you're attracting, the guys you are attracting. And again, you're seeing that you're only attracting just undesirable individuals. There's nothing even a faulty on paper coming your way. This is where you do have to take a step back and say, okay, what kind of man do I want? And now what kind of woman does that man desire? What's, what's tripping a lot of women up is they want a certain kind of man, but they want that kind of man to accept what they're willing to put out, not what actually the man desires for a woman. And here's the thing, you don't have to change, you don't have to adjust yourself for anybody. You don't have to make any changes, whatever. You, you can stay as you are, but you can't do that and expect that kind of man to accept it. You see what I'm saying? Like if, if you're like, listen, you know what? The, the quote unquote price I have to pay to get that kind of guy ain't worth it to me. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to find my way to be at peace and happy here. Cool. But you can't sit there and say, I, I don't shouldn't have to change anything, but I'm going to continue to complain about men not wanting me as I am. That, whether you, whether your arguments have any kind of validity to them, whether in, in an ideal world, it would be exactly how you lay it out. The reality is that that's not how things are right now. And the reality is that complaining about it and making noise about it isn't going to change anything. It's not going to make things better for you. It's going to keep you in this place of frustration, resentment, animosity, negativity. It's not healthy. So it's like we just have to make a choice. If we want this, then we have to tap into what that wants from us. And if we don't want to deal with that, then we adjust what we desire. Well, we, we switch to something else. So to, to give an example, it's like, okay, I remember one time I was working at this job. I was working at a call center. And I'm not going to say who I was working for, but I was working and it was a sales position, right? And I was killing, killing the sales position. And let's just say, I don't know, at this time, I'm getting paid, I don't know, let's just say $15 an hour. I can't remember. So I'm getting paid $15 an hour, but there's this next department that's a level up, right? And it's supposed to be the higher end clientele and more potential for money and all these things, right? So I'm like, okay, I want that. I, I was always like, I'm, I'm always looking to get promoted and get to that next level. So anyways, <clears throat> I busted my behind. They called me up. Hey, you want this position? Yes. Got that position. Two days in, I was like, this ain't for me. I don't want it. I don't care. The extra money ain't worth it. The stress that comes with this, the environment, the, the, I hated everything. And to me, it was like, yo, put me back where I was. I will go back down to $15. I don't care. I was happier there. All right. That's the same thing that we have to do sometimes when it comes to relationships or what we desire in a partner. And don't get me wrong, because I think there's a there is a part of us that has to learn what we truly need versus what we want. And that's a big piece of this puzzle. But I do also think that sometimes we don't realize that what we want ain't worth having, <laughs> okay? And what comes with what we want is too much of a damn headache. We would find a greater peace and happiness, maybe just a notch below, what may seem like a notch below. So it, it looks like a notch below on the surface, but if you're happier, then you actually want, you actually upgraded in my opinion. Like, yeah, I went to a lower department and I got a little bit less per, uh, money per hour, but I was way happier. I was way better off. So to me, I still want, and that's the way we have to look at it. So in, in, in addition to determining what, what we want, desires of a partner, we have to find our happy place. And so I encourage you all as women to find that happy place of, okay, what's, what do I really need? What am I willing to give to receive what I need? All right. And, and what is, the, the lengths to which I'm willing to go to make this all happen. And finding that place where you can be happy and at peace. And yes, it might mean, and when I say sacrificing some things, I don't ever want you to sacrifice what you need, okay? 
but it might be adjusting the wants and understanding that the wants are very in the moment. Let me add this, because I think this hit my spirit is very important for me to say right now. One of the big reasons why I'm huge on encouraging waiting for a connection is because I do believe that connection is a very spiritual occurrence. And, and it's like our spirit recognizing its match, okay? And they say that things happen in the spirit before they happen in the physical. And so I say all that to say, a want to me is very in the moment. It's based on what we perceive right now, our logic of things, uh, where we are in life. And that's why what you want at 20 is not always what you want at 30, at 40, and so on and so forth. Because it changes as, as you go along. But a need is constant. A need was always there. Because again, if we go back to the spirit, the spirit knew where you were headed in life. You may not have known, spirit knew where you were headed in life, okay? And knew what, what, where your growth would be, knows who can fit into that, who can walk that path with you, so to speak. And, and, and listen, sometimes it's just not time for anyone to walk the path with us. So sometimes continuously meeting the wrong guy, it's just a matter of it ain't time yet. And there's nothing wrong with that. Don't get frustrated, don't get discouraged. Take a step back, pray, and say, okay, maybe it's just time for me to really focus in on other things that need to be done in my life. Not let me bury myself in distractions. Not let me, let me lie to myself and act like I don't want a relationship to make this easier to deal with. No, own how you feel. You want a relationship? Nothing wrong with that, all right? But understand that, you know what? It ain't time. So let me continue to develop me in the way that I need to develop, the way that God wants me to develop, all right? And continue to strive to be my best self. And in doing that, you're only ensuring that when the time comes and that person who you do have a connection with, who does fit what you need, is not, pre excuse me, not present in your life, you will be able to have a healthy, amazing relationship with that individual. So don't get caught up in all this other nonsense, all right? Find your happy place, understand how you need to work on yourself, but also be patient in the process of preparing to receive. I always say you're not waiting, you're preparing to receive. So listen, I, one of the things that can help you with all this that we're talking about and help you with finding your purpose, healing, tapping into your feminine energy, understanding men better, is joining my special coaching program. Take advantage, thousands of women have already done this and it's been so helpful to them. Click the link in the description or in the comment section or go to receivingmyblessings.com. You get to have uh, live Q&As with me. There's tons of videos and modules on all those topics I've just laid out for you. It is such a beneficial experience. So again, go to receivingmyblessings.com or click the link in the description or in the comment section. So I got a few more things I want to mention, but so this is a quick bonus, all right? And this is, I'm not going to lie to you. This is a little bit of my own pet peeve, <laughs> okay? I'm just going to keep it real. But it is a legitimate suggestion that I think you need to consider, all right? In regards to the fact that many women are struggling to meet more guys or meet more funny guys, especially in this society that we live in now where, you know, going out isn't as open and free as it used to be. It's a little more restrictive, okay? And so the reality is that many more people are engaging at the very least online, whether that be online dating, whether that be social media, whatever the case may be. So the suggestion I'm going to give to you, if you want to make it easier for you to meet more potential, and this is specifically in regards to social media, take your damn profile off of private. All right? <laughs> Uh, I'm so tired, tired of seeing y'all with your pages on private talking about you can't meet somebody. Of course you can't meet somebody. They can't access your page. Now I get it. I understand you don't want everyone to have access to your page. Maybe you're trying to keep certain people out. Maybe you don't want the flood of DMs from guys. <laughs> if that's your reason and, and you want to keep it private, okay, cool. But I really think for those of you who are on private, because not all you are, well, those of you are all private and you would like to see more opportunity come your way, take it out private. That's all. Very simple, very easy, all right? 
And I'm gonna give you one more, one more suggestion that popped in my head <laughs> that I wanna mention, all right? And that is very simple, smile in your profile picture, all right? So I, I mentioned it many times in previous videos, there's a study that shows women are found more attractive when they smile. Smiling makes you more inviting, it, it gives off a better energy, a better spirit. So I notice a lot of women, again, we have to understand that in today's world, social media is almost like going to the store nowadays. Like literally, it's how you just randomly bump into people and see people. You know, any day you can see some new person you've never seen before on social media. And so since it is a representation of us to some degree, though I know it's gotten out of hand and it's a lot, a lot of phoniness going on, let's not worry about that. The point is, you're going to be seen on there. It is a first impression for a lot of people. Let's make it a good one. Just smile on the profile picture. That's it. I, I'm telling you, you may see a significant difference in not just people hitting you up, but the type of person who hits you up. How you come across in those images you put online does play a role because unfortunately, in this digital world that we live in, the, the, the downfall of online meeting, meeting online, is that it gives more people time to scrutinize each other, all right? When we meet in person, it's like it's more, it's quick. So we don't have, have as much time. To me, I feel like psychologically, we, we go quicker to what we like or what we potentially like versus online, we, we look for what we don't like. But, and, and we can't stop if somebody wants to nitpick and find any little thing. But I think something as simple as just being mindful of how we present ourselves online and for the women smiling your profile picture, can give you some extra points, so to speak. All right, so I keep saying one more thing before we go, because this is a question I was asked, and I, and I said I was going to answer this on the video, all right? And I was asked that, somebody said to me they were told to go out alone, a woman, of course. She was told to go out alone more, that that would increase her chances of meeting somebody. And she asked me, would that be a good idea? Do I suggest that, all right? Now, let me first say, of course, I want women to always take safety measures and make sure that you are, you know, okay, you know, and do what you have to do to make sure you're, you're going to be good. Um, but just looking at the dynamic of going out alone from the perspective of, does that help you meet more people? I would say yes. All right. Because again, a woman who is out alone, I already know some of y'all are thinking, well, some men might look at y'all and think you just dare to get laid or something, right? But, <laughs> and some men might think that. I'm not gonna sit there and lie to you. However, being alone makes it easier for men to approach you. A lot of times women don't realize when you go out with your friends, right? You're, you're in this group of girls Nobody wants to be potentially rejected in front of an audience. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, he doesn't want to approach you and have to deal with a possible note while all your girls are there laughing at him when he walks away. So it becomes harder. So I, so I will say that even if you go out with friends, it'd be good to have moments where you allow yourself to be by yourself. Meaning, okay, if you go to a lounge, so to speak, or for example, um, go into the bathroom by yourself or people, go into the bar real quick by yourself. Having some kind of moment where someone can feel it's easier to approach you. But that's one of the advantages of going out alone. But again, take uh, necessary precautions to be safe, make sure you're good, but it, it can definitely work. Hey, thank you for watching this video. Be sure to check this one out right here, and I'll see you there. I know what you're thinking. Some men are just absolutely ridiculous, right? You, you go out with them, things seem cool, and next thing you know, they're gone. They disappear. And you're like, what the hell just happened? Well, I'm going to explain to you what